What if you could just throw on a brain sensing headband and take one measurement that reflected how well your brain is actually operating on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, the Muse headband just released what they are calling the HRV of your brain, and I've been testing it for the last several weeks. It's called Peak Alpha, and there is a bunch of scientific literature that links it to the health of your brain in relation to daily meditation practices, age, cognitive performance, stress, sleep quality, and basically anything else that can affect the health of your brain. In my opinion, this really supercharges what the Muse device is capable of doing. I personally would have loved to have had this measurement option when I was an active duty mental health doctor in the US Navy because it's like having a Fitbit for your brain and it really could have opened a lot of doors for the congressional grant studies that I was applying to back then. In this video, we'll review the basics of what the Muse headband is. I'll talk about my own personal experience of measuring my alpha peak and how well I felt like it correlated to my mental state and my brain health. And then I'll share some tips on how I think that you can improve your own personal peak alpha alpha and what this means for the public at large when it comes to having a tool that you can use to measure your brain health at home. The Muse headband is an EEG electroencephalography headband that teaches you how to meditate but also collects information about your brain health through brainwave sensors. These soft sensors are able to pick up tiny voltage changes on your scalp that correlate to different levels of brain activity. Delta and theta brainwaves become more prominent when you are sleeping and are drowsy. Alpha is higher when you are meditating or have relaxed attention, and beta and gamma increase during activities like doing mental math or experiencing anxiety. The range for alpha is between 8 and 12 brainwave oscillations per second, and within that range there's a spot at which your alpha brainwaves have the highest amplitude, which is called your peak alpha. So Muse is now measuring that with their headband and calling it your alpha peak. Whereas one day you might have an alpha peak of 11, the next day you could have an alpha peak of nine if you experienced a poor night of sleep in between measurements. Another thing that can improve your peak alpha levels is doing regular meditation. The Muse headband gives you audio feedback based on your brain waves while you'd meditate with the headband on. If you pick the rainforest soundscape, for example, the more wind and waves you hear, the more that it's tracking that you lost attention on the breath or meditation object. And the more you hear the soundscape calm down and hear birds, the better you're doing, which correlates with multiple different brain waves, but you can think of it as having higher levels of alpha. I'm really happy that they are introducing the peak alpha measurement because I think it'll help the Muse community a lot. Over the last five years, there's been a bunch of Muse enthusiasts posting their brainwave results online and speculating on what the brainwave patterns might mean during their meditation sessions or different cognitive exercises, but it's difficult to correlate the scientific evidence with the graphs, especially if you don't have training in neuroscience. But now that we have the peak alpha measurement, I think that the relationship between the brain metrics and brain health will be a lot more evident when people share their scores on the Muse community. So earlier this year, I was actually taking my raw brainwave data off the Muse headband and uploading it to ChatGPT to see if it could report my peak alpha levels. It was fun to do and ChatGPT actually was able to calculate scores for me. But what I found out is that the brainwave spreadsheets actually have a ton of data tokens in them and it makes it difficult for ChatGPT to properly analyze that data. So the process became pretty labor intensive and I was also getting different peak alpha levels reported to me using the same data sets. So there was workflow issues and I was getting pretty poor reliability on those numbers. So now it's great that I can just do sessions on the Muse app and get these peak alpha measurements right there from my account when I do my meditation sessions from day to day. As a mental health provider, I'm really curious to see how peak alpha in my patients changes from day to day with mental health treatment. I think this could be a tool that's used along with subjective scales and clinical assessment to really document the health of a person's brain in the clinic as they deal with issues like depression, anxiety, or ADHD, for example. In order to get your peak alpha levels with the Muse, you need to establish a baseline over the course of 10 sessions. If you're in a rush, you can just do five minute sessions and you can do multiple sessions per day. They do now have a special section within the app that explains peak alpha measurement, and you do have to have the premium subscription model to have access to the peak alpha measurement. Honestly, I couldn't wait to see what my peak alpha was. I took measurements all throughout the day and on different days so that I could average them together and get a true value. In general, I noticed that my levels tend to be higher in the morning and a little bit lower in the afternoon, and I am seeing trends correlated between how much sleep I got the night before and how high the alpha levels are during the day. Back last summer, I knew that 
that Muse was researching on this and they actually took my data and gave me a brain age. And I noticed how sleep deprivation when either my infant was up at night or during travel really affected those scores. And this time around when they made it available in the app, I had just gotten back from Paris doing a brain scan video. So I started taking the daily measurements and you can see on this graph how my peak alpha measurements have improved as I've gotten better sleep, gotten back into my routine, and I have had a regular meditation schedule throughout the last week or two. I think this is the start of a really bright future where we can get measurements like this from day to day. Now, keep in mind that it's important that these metrics are customized to the individual because there's quite a bit of a variability from day to day and you need to establish where your baseline is. Overall, the idea is that you either want to improve or maintain your level of peak alpha as you age. Research shows a pretty consistent decline in peak alpha that's correlated with either cognitive impairment or age. So don't be scared when you get your peak alpha. This is very individual specific and you need to take the measurements with a grain of salt. And although this biomarker is substantiated in the literature, it's still very new and we're learning a lot about it. So don't freak out if your levels are low. I've had scores everywhere from nine to 13. So it's pretty variable, especially when I was loading my data into ChatGPT. Although ChatGPT in one of my videos did say, I must be a meditator because I noticed my alpha went way up when I closed my eyes. I just think it's great that we can add this biomarker to our repertoire of other popular measurements like body fat, fat percentage, and HRV. I'm really curious to see how diet, exercise, and health trends like cold plunge and sauna can affect these metrics. So be sure to subscribe because I plan to test all these out with the Muse headband this year. I think in the future, we're gonna look back on peak alpha as just one of those measurements that really encouraged people to have healthy habits to improve the quality and performance of their brain. And now that we have a metric that varies from day to day, I think it will certainly change how people view mental health, brain performance, and personal development over the coming years. I also really like how Muse is now showing your brainwave frequency tracings on every recording. So you can take a look at when you got negative neurofeedback and correlate that to drops and rise rises in brainwave frequency bands. Some feedback for Muse with the alpha peak measurements is that I would like to do a deeper dive on the metrics. It would be cool on the peak alpha report page if you could select certain measurements and see what time of day they were taken, as well as how much sleep you got the night before if you wore the Muse S overnight or had some aura data. Muse is adding new measurement tools like questionnaires, as well as a brain recovery score that will just add to the set of tools we have now to measure our brain health. Personally, I've done a couple of specific things this year to improve my brain health. I'm becoming very wary of seed oils like vegetable oil and canola oil. Studies have shown that these are high in omega-6 fatty acids, and a lot of people are suspecting that these seed oils lead to chronic inflammation in the body and in the central nervous system. I know when I cut them out, I felt much more clear and if I go to a restaurant where I know they are using things like canola oil, the next day I just feel terrible. I just get brain fog. I can't get motivated. I can't think straight. It's very noticeable to me now. So a lot of packaged foods have these seed oils. Avoid them as much as possible. Try to eat whole foods and you'll feel a lot better. Also, cut out as much sugar as you can. It's really toxic and neuroinflammatory. Personally, I've avoided all dessert for a year and a half and I feel great. Sleep is really important. Make sure to get at least seven and half to nine hours of sleep per night and keep a regular bedtime. And in the morning, do expose yourself to morning light to help cement your circadian rhythm so that you get actually tired at night and you go to bed on time. I've been doing cardio for two to three times a week and I lift weights around two to three times a week as well. We know that exercise actually increases blood flow to the brain and it releases myokines that improve mental health through the release of neurotransmitters and actually encouraging neuronal growth. And alcohol, it's so pro-inflammatory. I cut it out a year and a half ago and my energy levels have doubled since then. Muse on the app recommends things like exercise and also supplements like lion's mane mushroom and having a regular sauna practice. So those are some things that I'm not doing that I want to incorporate in my routine and see if they improve my peak alpha. Hope you enjoyed the video. I do have an affiliate link below if you want a nice discount to the Muse headband package and to support the channel. If you want more information on the science of the Muse headband, check out this video here and I'll see you on the other side.